Hi, I'm Roy Nix here in the McNix Golf Custom Fitting Studio. Behind me you'll see the, the hitting net. There are mats to hit off of and you'll see the flight scope sitting up on the screen there that we use to analyze golf swings. I'm going to talk to you about what a fitting is, what you can expect for a fitting, and what we try to achieve here at McNix Golf. I've got a 5 iron here with a steel shaft. This 5 iron has a shaft in it that's approximately 130 grams, maybe 125 to 130. The head will be approximately 253 grams, as all five irons will be. All five iron heads weigh about the same thing, give or take two or three grams, depending on the company and what they're using it for. The loft is usually pretty similar. The loft can be adjusted. The main thing we're going to talk about today is weight, balance point, club head speed, swing speed, and these things. Now over here, next one I'll pick up is a graphite shaft. This graphite shaft weighs approximately 75 to 80 grams. Now 75 to 80 versus 125 to 130, that's about 50 grams difference. That 50 grams in the shaft makes a lot of difference in how you swing a golf club. We'll get into that in a moment. I'll explain part of what I'm talking about. But first, I'd like to call my son Daniel over here and show you a few things to do with your hand-eye coordination. All of us uh, are fairly normal. Uh, Daniel, I want you to shake hands with me, son. Notice Daniel and I got our hands together. They're flat, palm to palm, just like this. Not a problem. Can you give me a high five? Got our palms together again. All right, can you uh, give me some skin? Same thing. Now, the point I'm making here, thank you, Daniel. You can run the camera again now. The point I'm making here is that most of us can shake hands, most of us can high five, most of us can give a little skin, and we don't have a problem getting our palms parallel and together. What that means is that you probably have pretty good hand-eye coordination. You may not have enough to play in the major leagues and play baseball. You may not have enough hand-eye coordination to be a great tennis star or one of the great uh, table tennis or ping pong players but you have enough to shake hands and get your hand where you want to get it. So if you can do that and you have a normal grip where your palms are parallel similar to this and they're lined up with the club face, the only thing you need to worry about to hit the ball where you want it to is to point that club face at the target when it strikes the golf ball. Have the same thing in ping pong or table tennis. If I were playing table tennis, most people grip the paddle a little bit like this. Some people use the, this procedure, but I'm an old-fashioned one and I grip it like this. If I'm playing table tennis and the camera, let's say, is where I want to aim the ball, if I point the paddle at the camera, the ball will go at the camera in that general direction. If I tilt it up, the ball will go high. If I tilt it down, the ball will go low. If I tilt the paddle this way, the ball will go that way. If I tilt the paddle like this, the ball will go that way. Pretty simple. All it is is a matter of pointing your palm where you want it to go because your palm is lined up with that paddle, just like your palm is lined up with the golf club face. Now we take it up to a bigger paddle. How about tennis? Tennis, anyone? Same thing with a tennis racket. Usually hold it something like this with your palm facing where the racket is or towards where you want to strike the ball. If I'm hitting a forehand and I aim the racket at impact at the camera, the ball's going to go at the camera. If my forehand and I do this, the ball's going to go this way. If I get around this way, the ball's going over here. Simple enough. So if you can point your palm at the target, you should be able to hit a golf ball towards that target. Now over here, to show you the importance of weight, I have a softball bat. I marked it because I'm getting old and I forget, but it's 28 ounces. It's a 34 inch bat and it's 28 ounces. Now if I swing that 28 ounce bat and I've got my hands palm to palm like I do when I play baseball and I swing, if I have the bat pointed at the target, that's where the ball's going to go. If I swing late and the bat is slow but it strikes the ball like this, the ball's going to right field. If I swing early and I get around on it, the ball's going to go to left field. 
simple enough. Now, I've got a 28 ounce bat. Depending on how strong you are, whether you can get that 28 ounce bat square or not. Some people may not be able to. Right here, this is a little plastic bat. A child's toy. It weighs four ounces. Chances are you can get that around a lot faster. I think you can see that on camera. I'm trying just as hard with both. This one I don't get to here as quickly as I can get this one to here. And it even goes past that. Now, you take that with a golf club, you have a 130 gram shaft, 250 gram head and a 50 gram grip versus a shaft that weighs 50 grams less. Which one are you going to get closed faster? Same thing with the driver. We all go for graphite shafts. We got the new uh, 175 gram lightweight club heads with a 45 gram shaft. Man, most shafts are in the 50 to 60 gram range. Most heads are around 200. We save 25 grams here, 20 grams here, for 45 grams lighter. Chances are, if you've got one of these babies, you're gonna get it around real quick, you're gonna get it like this, and you're gonna hit it left. The face is gonna be closed at impact, and the club is gonna be going to the left. So you're gonna hit a pole hook. Now, if I had this driver with a 200 gram head, and 130 gram shaft, that's 95 more grams here, 25 grams here, that's a lot of weight difference. That club is going to be slower to get to impact and the face is probably going to be open. Now what we do in custom fitting is we use our launch monitor back here and our launch monitor measures swing path, swing plane, face angle as well as club speed, ball speed, and spin rate. We know that if we make a club lighter, you're likely to swing it out here and across the path like this, hit it to the left, and you're likely to have a closed club face and hook it because the face is closed. If you make that club heavier, you're likely to swing it inside with the face open and hit it to the right. That's what our fitting problems are all about. We need to find a club that makes it possible for you to get the face square at impact and point it at the target you want to hit it to. Now we're going to have some other things in here where we we took a club head and we glued a steel rod on it, put a golf ball there, and we got some shots with a golfer swinging inside out with an open face, inside out with a closed face, outside in with an open face, outside in with a closed face straight down the line at the target with an open face and a closed face and in all three positions we got the ball pointed at the line that you're swinging. Now what happens in golf if your swing path is down here to up here and the face is pointed there you'll hit a straight shot and you'll hit it dead right. If your swing path is in this direction and the face is pointed in the direction of the swing path you'll hit a straight shot but you'll hit it to the left. Now in either situation, if you're right on line, the ball is going to go right at the target. In each situation, if the club face is open or closed, you're going to create a tilt on the axis of the ball which we call side spin. If you're swinging on line as I am now, and the face is square, the ball goes straight at the target. If you're swinging on line and at impact the face is open, the ball is going to start a little to the right of the target and slice further right. If you swing your own line and the face is closed at impact, the ball is going to start a little bit to the left of the target. It's going to hook further left. Basically, wherever that club face is pointed, when it makes impact with a golf ball, is where the golf ball is going to start out. Not exactly, but for all intents and purposes, for you swinging a golf club, that's a good rule of thumb. The ball is going to go where the face is pointed at impact. Just like the ball is going to go where the face is pointed at impact. The side spin created by an open or closed face in the direction of the swing path will cause the ball to spin in one direction or the other. That's where we get a slice or a hook. So if the club face is going at the ball, at the target, it will go 
at the target when you make impact. If it's closed, it'll go left. If it's open, it'll go right. So what we try to do here is find the right weight, the right club head weight so you can get the face square so that when you get ready to shake hands with that golf ball, that face is going to be pointed at the target and the ball is going to go where you're pointing. Come on in, let us give you a fitting. We'll show you how it works. We'll improve your golf scores because you'll hit the ball solid more often. You'll hit it straight more often. You'll hit it at the target. Your distance variation will be less and you'll score lower because you'll hit more fairways, you'll hit more greens, and you'll putt better because we'll do the same thing with your putter. Thanks, Roy Nix again from McNix Golf. Stop in and see us. Okay.